I'm Tyler, this is my co-host Brad, and today we're finding the derivative on the player's curve. No math, Tyler. Stop it. Just a little bit. No calculus. Ah. I demand you stop the calculus ah. right now. <laughs> we're channeling our inner Thanos. Just kidding. That's hey, statistics terrible. are fun. Calculus sucks. Statistics are fun. Yes. Yeah. Can't disagree with that. <laughs> is that what dice rolls are right the odds of dice rolls is just a big game of persuasion <laughs> oh there you go that's a pretty high roll in a uh, 10 yeah, yeah 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 no i actually it's... i i i dig statistics statistics are, are my thing man i love them but today we are talking about character optimization, optimization. how to get good how to get good just kidding now when we You're talk about optimization, just want to help you out. It's important to to recognize, <laughs> define it, defining optimization. Define it. We're not actually talking about trying to break the game, and in five e, it's a little bit harder to do that, like naturally, just because sure. of the way it's the 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 way the game has been written. What do you what is it called? They call it uh, what bounded you, accuracy. Bounded accuracy. D has got all kinds of weird bounds on it that you might even know yeah. are there. But guess yeah. what? It helps just keep it all in line, which yeah. is. I think a lot better than third edition was. Yeah, if you're new to D and D, you don't know the difference. But if you're if you're not new to D and D, then you know that there was some pretty broken editions or or ways that you could really break the game. And we're not talking about that. No. When we talk about optimization, in particularly in Five E, uh, what we're talking about is just being reliably good at something. Anything. You can anything. be optimal for just about anything you want in the game. Anything and you, you but want. But optimization is being reliably good. Like, you can know that I will consistently probably be good at this thing. Yeah. Except for maybe the, you know, the nat ones you may get because we all get it's them. It's true. It's true. <laughs> we all send the dice to dice jail. We all know what it's like. <laughs> we all got one. And if you don't, you will have one soon. <laughs> yeah. But outside that, you want to be good at something. Be good at something. And so, uh, I mean, that's really the essence of the game. Like, there's nothing quite like having uh, that situation come up and you just being like, oh, this is a good time for my character to shine. And right. that takes work. That In a lot of cases, that, that takes, takes – yeah, that takes – Math. Math. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I didn't know I was going to play – use math when I played Dungeons and Dragons. No. Now my back. math teacher now was correct back. my whole life. <laughs> sitting there going, when am I going to use this crap? Flash forward 20 years. You're playing games. I get plus three, so. <laughs> right. 14 plus three plus two plus one yeah. minus three is? Where's my 16. spreadsheet? Where's my spreadsheet? <laughs> Where's my calculator? <laughs> pull, that, pull that out. Good uh, job, Tyler. Tyler, we've learned, is good at math, everybody. I'm pretty can you, good. Can you tell? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty impressed Or did right I now. just bluff you really I'm, well? I'm, I'm impressed. It's really, it's a really good bluff. The dice are on my side lately. They were. <laughs> they like me. Yeah, you yeah, rolling tens, man. Two tens in a row. So it's like, eh, I'm average. I'm average. And that's statistics. <laughs> that's right. So we have some pointers. All right. So let's start. First pointer, right? Pointers. Vision. Vision. Have a good vision for what you want to do. Yeah, not the dude with the rock in his forehead, though. <laughs> that we, is we've cool. We've had lots of conversations about him. We probably will talk about him more. Right. <laughs> but 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 vision of like knowing like what you want to try and accomplish, right? Like right. having a clear, having a set ahead. Like I want to be really good at taking hits. Yeah. I just want to sit there in the middle of combat. I don't care if I hit anything. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I don't go down. Right. That's that's a clear vision or goal of something you want to accomplish. That's right. Yeah. And I, you make a good point. And that's like following down the path of one of the three pillars of D&D, &D, combat. Right. So maybe, maybe you have this vision of, and maybe combat is the most exciting part of the game for you. And yeah. So, you know, bringing that up or thinking about that as you character build and as you... Right. Uh, choose your background and your skills and all of that can be really beneficial. Maybe you're more interested in the exploration portion. You want to find all the things. Right. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you, how good, how stabby stabby you are. Uh huh. You want to just find the things. Yeah. Or you, find the lore or find something, find anything. <laughs> right. Like maybe right. you, you, you are obsessed with the Cumberbatch, uh, Sherlock Holmes Ooh, and that'd be fun. You want to play That would be a fun build that, in a game. Know? I, that would be fun. Yeah. I'd enjoy that. Uh, I don't know if I'd play that. I don't know if I would like get the personality off that well. Sure. I wish I could. I just don't like, I can't pull off, but it'd be fun to play for Maybe sure. Maybe you want to blend between the combat and the exploration. You're going for an Indiana Jones vibe. Ooh. You know? Get them a whip. Yeah. And my fedora. <laughs> <laughs> Not your cursed one, though. Actually, oh, you might do want your cursed one. That would be really cursed cool if I was fedora. doing that. 
dude. <laughs> It's such a great. Manufacturer. That was a good item. It's we'll get great, there one day. We'll talk about it. It's <laughs> Anyways, awesome. it's a long story though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or exploration being the third. Or sorry, I said exploration. I meant social. social. You want to talk to all the things. Like, yeah. Really well, or you want to intimidate all the things. Right. Or you want to be able to. You want to be able to talk your way out of jail, not pick the lock out of jail. Totally. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> that, wanna, would, that would be cool too. I need to do this. It's <laughs> a good idea. I think I to get in jail every night and talk his way out <laughs> every time. <laughs> Just just give me the key, guys. It's okay. <laughs> in the morning, nobody will care. Trust me. In a month, it won't even matter. Yeah. And there's a, a lot of uh, ways you can go about that. Like, I want to be really great with the social situations. Well, it's like, okay, cool. Well, what's your field? Do you want to be doing a lot of, like, spells? Do you want to be magic dealing with every but social Tyler, situation? But or? Tyler, if you're really good at one thing, that means you suck at other things. <laughs> <laughs> Is that really optimal? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> good <laughs> answer. You are reliably good at, at some things. things. <laughs> but this brings up a very interesting point yes. that if you're really good at something, you want to make sure that you have <laughs> good thing. D and D is a team game, right? That's right. It's a team game. <laughs> Otherwise it would be hard. Yeah. <laughs> Although D and D can be hard anyway, anyway, depending upon DM, but right. But collaboration though, right? Mm -hmm. That's probably a really good point is uh, collaborate. And we're big fans of a session zero. And sure. if you're able to come to the table with your vision and as build your characters together as a party, it's it can be a lot of fun to uh, collaborate on what people like their visions are, what they want to be, what they want to be able to do. Right. Um, it's it could be a lot of fun, but a very different campaign if everybody shows up. Teamwork with... keeps the party alive. <laughs> that that... <laughs> it's very true. It's very true. But I mean, collaborating with your DM too, and like that session zero is probably the ideal time for this collaboration when you're building. Right. Uh, but it should for sure. it should continue throughout the campaign because nobody wants to be the I slay all the undead things in a in a campaign about you know killing dragons. Right. <laughs> yes. Exactly. That, the probably I mean you could be really good at killing undead, but you're probably <laughs> not going to see it very much. <laughs> right. Yes. Um, yep. Yep. So. Yeah. yeah, I guess your point too, like being able to collaborate. I just said, like you said, with the DM, right, and with your party too, to make sure that like party. you guys can come together. Mm -hmm. And I think even that case be optimal as a party, right? I think it kind of goes all around, right? It could be optimal as your own character and optimal as a party. Yeah, um, and this isn't to say that because we sat down and you said you wanted to be uh, the guy who handles all the social situations, and I said I wanted to be the guy who handled all the exploration situations. A good DM and a good table will still allow for some flexibility there. Absolutely. Like if we're investigating my like my home, like this is literally you're the my dwarf house. in the mine. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably be pretty good at it naturally because you're a dwarf. Stone, and that's part of your kind of racial effect, yeah, right, yeah. Um, and but doesn't mean the other guy who's good at it can't aid you and help you, aid at it, you, right? Exactly, yeah. Or vice versa, right? Knowing like, hey, this is my thing. Let me let me actually aid you and help you in this situation yep. because we can make sure we're even better at it yep. this time too, for yeah. sure. Rely and, on your party. Yeah, finding ways that you overlap a little bit uh, can create these synergy effects. It's mm -hmm. not, oh, this guy's always stealing my thunder. Uh, I mean, I'd play pickup ball with my dad and uh, there was one thing that he, he talked about a lot where it's like if there's somebody who has like a hot hand, somebody who's just making a lot of baskets, figure out ways to get them the ball. Right. You know, and at the neck at the table the next night, maybe you'll be the one with the hot hand and right. be like, no, this one's like clearly about you. Let's use group mind what and Tyler means is sometimes some other. people roll hot that night. Yeah. <laughs> Let them roll more. Let them roll more. And when you roll bad, just stop. Or you <laughs> Send know, it to if dice you're <laughs> talking to the dwarven <laughs> nobility, maybe have your dwarf go and talk to him. Even though he doesn't have the highest charisma, you can aid him, you know, right. and stuff like that. So be f and being flexible because really character build, it survives until session one. <laughs> <laughs> no character build survives your first level. <laughs> and, and like, as you go on, you might kind of discover, and we've seen this uh, as DMs and as players too, where this vision that, you, that was that was had even collaborated on uh, isn't working out the way you expected or, right. or the way you wanted. Or I mean, you, maybe it's just not as interesting as you thought it would be. Right. And sometimes, I mean, other DMs may be like I am, where I don't just hand out items that my characters necessarily want. I, I like to roll randomly for magic items. And so if you also count on a specific magic item, like maybe you really mm. need flame brand, right, to, mm. to make your build work right, you may not necessarily get it. So you got to be flexible in that case, like make sure that, hey, I'm not relying only on one item to make this work. I can be flexible and say, I can, it doesn't matter what I get as far as items go, or maybe you have, maybe you're a part of it. So we just 
really wants to also do something different too that doesn't maybe work as well as a group with yours you yep. gotta be flexible to make sure you can all make it work and and, and have that teamwork yep uh, dms have that bruce almighty moment where it's like <laughs> there's all these questions coming in and there's the temptation to just go yes to all but we can watch that movie and you see how it turns out you it's gotta not, just say no to all instead pretty. right no no, no 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 you don't want that oh, either oh, oh. you don't want all that right. either <laughs> you every, want every other one <laughs> you want yes and you want yes and, and you want yes but. DMs should always be saying yes, but the, the and again, the know. thing is, is we say yes I might call but, that one. I think the DMs should be able to say no too. <laughs> they should be able to say no in the form of a yes but. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah. Uh, no. I want to fly one item no. so I can fly. No. <laughs> yes, but you're going to have to find something. <laughs> yes, but the dragon's going to eat you out of the sky when you do fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well um, and i mean along those same lines uh we mentioned earlier being flexible like if you're underground a lot of dwarves have stone cutting and right. they can they have advantage on these or they have double proficiency on knowledge checks these history checks about uh these stone different lines and stuff and stonework yeah. and whatnot and i mean here, here's a here's a point like you might not have picked up investigation you might not have picked up uh perception a whole bunch of those like insight type stuff yeah. Uh, but uh, you have that racial ability. So it's important, even when you're optimizing, even if you're focusing on one thing, still know what your character is good at. For sure. And, and I would see that even bleeds into, like, for instance, if you if further with the build too, if you're sitting there saying, well, I want to be the exploration expert, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe the DM let you know ahead of time, they're like, hey, like, they'll probably, the, the, the campaign will probably take you into lots of underground dungeons and places, right? Right. You know, and you say, well, great. Maybe as part of that, knowing what you're good at, right? You say, well, I want to take this expression guy and I'm going to choose the dwarf in this mm -hmm. case because I know the dwarf is good at that, right? Right. So knowing what a class of race is good at can help you because you can optimize along that route. Picking something that maybe doesn't synergize as well, you know, might make it harder to optimize along that, right? But knowing what you're good at can help you for that that role right and just knowing for instance like a rogue is probably generally good at exploration type stuff so maybe i could pick a dwarf rogue in that instance right yeah or maybe you say well i want to be the highly intelligent guy that does it too but i want to be a rogue i may only use spells so maybe instead you choose the wizard dwarf instead right, right? yeah you probably won't have the best intelligence for like saves and dc and stuff like that but you could be really good Mm -hmm. at all the other aspects of exploration that might help you because you have the company of spells and stuff like that right so different ways you can accomplish your goal definitely but it's good important it's very important to know what you're you know, know know what you're good at as far as race and classes go that way you're not just like working against yourself absolutely and leverage the rules that exist because uh they there's a lot of opportunity out there and you don't even have to homebrew. It's like, uh, For there's sure. lots of sub race options. There's Tosh's. <laughs> you uh, almost do anything you want of, now. <laughs> of, of Whatever. Race don't stuff. matter. It's no, just it's, all, it's all about whatever. Which is great because it's then cool. It gives you lots of that options. specific and flavor you're looking mm -hmm. for. You can almost always find it. For um, sure. And, uh, with, with some constraints, probably enough in my opinion to make it fun. For sure. I mean, D&D, you know, the, one of the main goals of D&D, I think, is to have fun. I don't think we play it and probably even watch yeah. our channel if you probably weren't having no fun at it, right? It's all about the statistics. <laughs> it's all about the stats. <laughs> stats is fun. Calculus sucks. Uh, I know. You can get mad at me before I go with it, and guess what? I just don't care. <laughs> Calculus I like stats. I, can, I like stats. This dice is reliably the same size. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, not, but it's not reliably roll. Yeah. Above a Whoa! 10 for me tonight. Oh my gosh. That was <laughs> Reliably rolling bad. That is my oh, name tonight. no. I think I said the dice gel. That's amazing. Here it goes. Four. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, you are. It's gone. We're done for the night, guys. Nightmare. It's gone. <laughs> it's in gel. It's... I hope that was loud enough to hear the... Because I, I, I put so. it in there with some gusto. <laughs> I think... Uh, so Tyler just did the banish spell on it. Banished. And it's going to be gone. <laughs> It will be stuck in its realm forever if we leave it there for an hour. Yep. It's gone. <laughs> or is it a minute? It's a minute. <laughs> it came from Dice Gel. Yeah. It came and now it went back to Dice Gel. Back. We're going to buy Once a new you one. Came. Um, Once you came. Once you came. And I mean, it's it's interesting because uh, as a party, we kind of adapted one time. There was this, this fellow. He is just like, uh, social was clearly his favorite part of every Dungeons yeah. & Dragons game. And he created this character that was a cobbler, and he was just obsessed with boots. He even named him Boots. <laughs> so and great. the dude, like, combat was pretty middling. Like, he did some pretty good combat stuff. And he stuff. was okay with it, because that's it, not what he'd optimized that's for. That's not what he wanted. Um, that's not what he wanted. And he compared and talked about everything in the in the scope of boots and boots metaphors. <laughs> it, was a, and, it was a great, it was a oh great dynamic. Oh, my gosh. Like, whenever we got into a social situation, we, we were just like, 
go. Like, talk to them. This, <laughs> is, this is just going to be the best. Take the reins, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we tried to aid him, and it was like, we'd normally just, I mean, pun intended, we'd step on his feet. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's it just he was just so good by himself. It should be like that. Like, when a character, when you've optimized your character and you know what you're good at, the party should also be recognizing that's what you're good at, too. For sure. And if you're practicing good group mind as a party, yeah. uh, then that's where you're trying really hard to make someone else look good, and they're trying really hard to make you look good, too. Right. And you guys can find those niches of these are the places where I look good. These are the places where you look good. And we try to like feed, feed each other the dice during those situations yep. and aid each other during those situations. And gosh, that's, that's what it's all about. Cause then everybody's synergizing and having fun rather than, no, nah, you always talk to him. Let me try this time. You know, and I don't know, like, no, for sure. And, and then again, I think it just keeps the game fun. Right. And, yeah. and again, too, like, I think everybody likes to succeed in the situations that the DMS will throw at them and, and again, too, as, as a group, even like that, it sense the whole group, you want to be as a group, be successful in those situations. You got to rely on each other as a group to yeah. make it work. Yeah. Um, and, and again, too, I'll just get the last point on like, you know, knowing what you're good at, unless you have any more out of no, it. No, no, yeah. I say, on. you know, it's also good to know, like, if you think like when you're optimizing, right? When you think about classes you're good at too, it's also good to know like what they're not good at. Yeah. <laughs> because it's like, I mean, if you, yeah. if you want to play like, I want to be the Barbarian spellcaster, okay. Good luck. Good luck. I mean, I I think you could do it. Yeah. I've I've had a mind to try and do it, but you're gonna sure. have it's gonna be a really hard uphill battle the whole time, you know. Yeah, Ben um, there tried that. It was actually <laughs> not fun. It was just not fun. And I, I wasn't good at combat. I wasn't right. good at the other stuff. It was like all three pillars. Check, check, check. I'm and, not good at anything. Reliably not right. good at anything. And I will say honestly, honestly, lots of times I think people want to be want to try and optimize how to optimize that character because it is fun, right? Yeah. When they play a well constructed, well optimized character, I think you, the people really do have fun, right? Yeah. Even though the dice may not roll that well for them, they'll still probably be pretty good at it anyway because they have extra bonuses, expertise, mm -hmm. retro mm -hmm. skills, or spells, or things that can help aid them to be successful in those endeavors anyway. Definitely. Um, and then again, people have fun. And again, that's the goal have fun. And so that's why I say, yeah, like optimize for sure. Totally. Because it's fun. Well, and I mean, as you, if you know what you're sacrificing, you know that's what a good you're point giving too. up in order to optimize, that, yeah. that helps a lot with the kind of fun factor. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a little bit... Um, it's a bit of a bummer when, like for me with that <laughs> sorcerer barbarian, I was sitting there trying to do these specific things, but I had no idea what I had sacrificed. I had ended up creating a character that is mad, uh, multi-attribute dependent. Right. And uh, I wasn't able to like really focus it towards any specific attribute to like really find to, a to niche. Be good at anything. Yeah. You couldn't really cast spells that well. Your right. DCs were low. You couldn't hit right. that well because your strength was too low. Cause right. You're... Because you're trying to make exactly. yourself have a good charisma. Yeah. And, and, and again, too, that kind of goes into the idea of a, of a multi-class build, right? If, you, if you're going to decide that you want to multi-class it with two different classes, mm -hmm. um, it's good to know, like, well, if I go... And again, every, and this is a good thing that come up in the sessions here, too, right? It's good to know, like, well, how what level do you think this campaign will get us to, right? Will it get to... We're doing a module we know will take us to 13 to 15, let's say. Sure. Is it going to be fifth level? I mean, that could influence decisions and things that you're optimizing on, right? But let's say you're getting reliably high, in levels you might say like well if i go four levels of sorcerer and two levels of paladin right then you know i what am i giving up well that means i probably won't get extra attack right with my paladin or i might not get high spell levels with my sorcerer right so mm -hmm. it's good to know like what are you sacrificing what are you giving up by multi-class in this sense or for instance if i decide that i want to be you know the rogue that is really good at exploration style stuff right? right like well i may be giving up you know stab really well because i may be putting a higher stat in my intelligence let's say instead right. of my dexterity right right so it's good to know what you're giving up so again you know like i said to so you know where to rely on your party for right yep and understanding your table too can, can yeah. really help with that decision uh like if if you know that uh this this campaign that you guys are getting ready to jump into is probably going to be really heavy combat but you're trying to sacrifice all these combat things and you have to kind of realize and recognize uh for an hour plus every time that we play i might feel less useful i might feel middling i might not feel like aragon well, I'm, I'm taking not, on 40 I'm, right i might not be the, i might not be the fighter next to sit next to me at the table right right um, yeah and and he rolls his dice and you're like holy cow you did how much damage that right. round you know and right. i mean if that's something that's going to irk you then you need to be aware of that for sure. Uh, there's I and this boots guy we were talking about. 
It didn't he matter. did not care that his uh, he, he whatever was, he was his, using like light hammers. Was. It was like one d four damage. It was like <laughs> so the smallest funny. damage dice he could use, and he didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, well, no, of course I'd have a small hammer. I work on boots. I don't need big hammers. I, it's I, like I, I was, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I was a swashbuckling um, rogue, rogue, and so right. <laughs> it was useful for me because I could use him when I needed him, and when I wanted to go solo, I could go solo. That's so right. That was fine. That so, was fine with me. Like our party complimented each other pretty well. Even it was it was that, a fun party. Situation. It was a really fun group with that. And yeah. again, it's not because you know everybody could run in and do high damage. Right. No, it was fun because we all were able to play off each other really well right. to make it fun. Yeah, for sure. We really enjoyed that. And and that should be the the end of optimization. Isn't um, everyone at the table hates me because I optimized and they didn't. <laughs> right. Um, I hate everyone else at the table because they didn't optimize or, you know, stuff like that. You need to find the table that's right for you and optimize to that level and just yeah. like, you know, synergize together. And it should make the game more fun. The DM can be more challenging. Yep. The party can be uh, more uh, uh, synergized and, and working together, more collaborative. Sure. Like it should bring the party together when you optimize. Absolutely. <laughs> Ob- absolutely. That's how it should feel. Absolutely. I agree with that. I think that's a good thing to place to end it right there. Yeah. Thanks, guys. We're Motley Mimic. We'll catch you next time. Cool. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for a bonus 1,000 XP. Bonus XP is not recognized at all tables. Consult your DM before taking bonus XP. Side effects may include, but not limited to, higher levels, ability score improvements, new spells, itchy throat, a sense of accomplishment, eye strain, rider's cramp, new features, feats, harder combats. Your level up doesn't have to be a grind. Now you can enjoy leveling with the people you love. Mom, quick! I rolled a nat 20! Bonus XP will not prevent gold being stolen, a dagger in the back, finding magic items, lost character sheets, low dice rolls. Other side effects include envy of her fellow players, bankruptcy, and in some stream cases, TPK or character death. Thanks, Bonus XP. If you're level 20, stop taking Bonus XP and consider rolling a new character.